Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a band ratio composite image in QGIS 3.1. So in essence what we're going to do, we're going to take a Landsat image, then we're going to pick a few different band ratios, and we're going to compute uh, three new rasters. Each one is actually going to be a band ratio. Then we're going to, we're going to use the Build Virtual Layer tool to combine those three band ratio rasters into a new uh, composite RGB image. So if you're not sure what a band ratio is, please check out this video. I strongly recommend it so that you can learn why we might want to uh, work with band ratios and really what they are. If you don't want to do that, the quick answer is a band ratio is simply when you take one uh, band image of a, of a satellite image and divide it by another. So what bands are we going to be working with today? We have a Landsat 8 image. And so if you look at this figure, uh, we have wavelength along the x-axis. And it shows you the 11 spectral bands that are collected in Landsat 8. Remember, each of these is a replicate image with the exact same footprint collected in a different interval of light or a different bandwidth of light. So bands 2, 3, and 4 are down in the visible, 5 in the near infrared, 6 and 7 in the far infrared. And then way out here, 10 and 11 are in the thermal infrared. And one important thing to know about these bands is they don't all have the same spatial resolution. So you see bands, most of these bands 1 through 7 are 30 meter pixel sizes, okay? But then the band, the panchromatic band is 15 meters, so it's higher spatial resolution. Um, and bands 10 and 11 out here, because they're way out in the thermal infrared, uh, they're at 100 meter spatial resolution. So when we think about doing band ratio work, if we don't want to resample the image, then you want to pretty much limit yourself to these 30 meter pixels where you know the pixels on any of these 30 meter bands are going to be lined up perfectly with each other. They're the same size. In order to do ratios with some of these other uh, pixel sizes, we'd have to resample the image. So in terms of uh, what band ratios we might want to pick for this example, um, one of the things band ratios do is they allow you to get better leverage on distinguishing materials on the land surface. So in, to help motivate this problem, I've put up this uh, spectral reflectance plot, which has, again, wavelength on the x-axis in uh, microns. And it shows the reflectance spectra for snow here in blue, OK? Uh, sand here in red, uh, water here in blue. And, uh, and then we have vegetation here in green. So each of these things has a different, reflect, different reflectance spectra, kind of like a barcode. And we want to pick ratios that are going to exaggerate these. So I've also overlaid the approximate bandwidth intervals of the Landsat 8 satellite. So band 2 is in the blue, band 3 in the green, band 4 in the red, and so on. So one, there's a lot of different strategies for how you might work with band ratios. One way that I keep it simple in my mind is just to say, let's pick some band ratios that are going to end up being high. They're going to give high values for different types of materials, OK? And then we'll color those specific colors. And then we'll know that that material may be whatever color we added. So for example, let's look at water. So this is water's reflectance spectra right here. It's quite high in the, or it's not that high, but it's relatively high in the blue. Um, and it is quite low out here in the uh, far infrared. So if we take a ratio of band 2 over band 7 for water, we would expect that number to be quite high. Okay, So we're going to take 2 over 7 as high for water. And we're going to end up assigning that to blue in QGIS. All right. What about for sand or rock? So that's this red curve here. Uh, what if we try 6 over 2 for this one? So uh, in this case, 
uh, sand should be reflecting a lot of light in, in band six and not much in band two. So that ratio should be high for sand or rock. And then for vegetation, why don't we try band five over band two, which should also give us a high ratio for vegetation. So keep those bands in mind. You might even want to jot them down because we're going to make these color assignments at the end of the video. Okay, so now let's head over into QGIS and show you how to make these band ratios. So what we're working with here is a Landsat image centered on Lake Champlain near the state of Vermont. And in the previous video, we clipped the Landsat image. So we're actually going to be working with this uh, clipped Landsat image. These are currently uh, displayed or uh, stored as what we would call a virtual raster layer. And those are shown over here. So it is uh, each of these virtual raster layers has actually all 11 Landsat bands held together within them. And so when we use Raster Calculator, we're going to have access to those individual Landsat bands, even though they're only displayed as a single kind of file name over here in the layers. Okay, so let's start making our band ratio images. Um, for that, we're going to go to Processing and Toolbox. Anytime you need to find a tool, this is where you want to go. I've already searched for Raster Calculator, and here is Raster Calculator. A few words about the calculator. Essentially what this does, um, it takes any rasters that you give it, and it does pixel by pixel calculations. So literally, if you, let's say you divide one raster by another, like we're going to do, it will go through sequentially every pixel, and it will match them up, right, kind of overlay the images, and it will divide the, the corresponding pixel in one layer by the corresponding pixel in the other layer. Does that for every single pixel in the image, and then it creates a new raster that is the result of that mathematical operation, where each pixel is the result of the the pixel by pixel operation. So lots, lots of powerful things you can do with Raster Calculator. Okay, so for us, we just want to do a little bit of division. And remember, our first ratio was going to be band 2 divided by band 7. So to add this into the expression, I'm just going to double click band 2. And I'm going to use the division sign here and write a little expression. And then I'm going to divide uh, band 7. One more word about this. This at 1, at 2, at 3, all that is telling you is the relative position of that band in the virtual raster stack, okay? It's just telling you this number 1 is on top, number 2 is second from the top. It doesn't necessarily mean that that is band 1, that is band 2. Um, in this case, they do correspond because when I created the virtual layer, I made sure that band 1 was on top, band 2 next, and so on. But if you didn't make sure, you don't know the relative position of what's in your virtual raster stack, then you may need to, you need to understand that before you move forward. Okay, but in this case, we know that uh, 2 is band 2 and 7 is band 7. So we're going to divide one by the other. Um, we'll cruise down. The next thing we need to do is uh, define a reference layer. And this is basically just a layer, a raster layer, that QGIS will take information from. It'll take the extent, the pixel size, and also the coordinate system. So in this case, I'm just going to choose the very same clipped Landsat that we're using as an input to our calculation. Since I've defined that, I don't need to update cell size, I don't need to update extent, and I don't need to update coordinate system. I am, though, going to save this to my desktop folder for lab 2 and give it a sensible file name. Okay, so I went in and did that. Uh, notice I used a .tiff extension, uh, or I set it to be a, a TIFF output. And I used a file name that has information in it. This file name tells me what I need to know about this file, which is that we did B band 2 divided by band 7 on the July 7th, 2020 Landsat image. Okay, so always use descriptive file names. Okay, so with that, we'll hit Run. It doesn't take very long, and it has indeed computed this first band ratio layer. So now I want you to repeat that same process, 
and create two more band ratio rasters. One that is band 6 divided by band 2, and one that is band 5 divided by band 2. Again, save them as individual files and make sure they're in your layers list. And then uh, pause the video and we'll start again. Okay, so now I've created my three band ratio rasters, 2 over 7, 6 over 2, and 5 over 2. And I want to take a quick look at these and show you something. Um, what I want to show you is that currently these three are displayed as grayscales. So this gives us a chance to check and make sure that, that we, the ratios we specified had the intended effect. So for example, recall that ratio 5 over 2 was supposed to make uh, vegetation high, high numbers for vegetation. And indeed, looking at this one on top, we can see that uh, areas of forest, right, which are up here in the mountains around Middlebury, are indeed uh, quite high. Here we have some conifers on the ridgelines that aren't as high, but a lot of the deciduous forests um, are showing up as light white colors. Um, so vegetation did give us high numbers. Then recall that uh, ratio uh, 2 over 7 down here was supposed to be high for water. So if we display that, sure enough, here Lake Dunmore is showing up as a nice white, bright white color, indicating indeed the 2 over 7 created high ratios. So now what I want to do is actually take these three band ratio rasters we've created and actually pull them together into a composite image, which in QGIS is called a virtual raster layer. So I'm going to turn them all back on. And to do that, we go up to Raster, Miscellaneous, Build Virtual Raster. And it's going to ask us for our input layers. And I'm going to select these three input layers, keeping in mind which one is on top, right? So make a note of this. 2 over 7 is on top, then 5 over 2, then 6 over 2. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and change that. I'm going to move 6 over 2 into the middle. OK, so 2 over 7, 6 over 2, and 5 over 2. This is going to be band 1. This is now going to be band 2 and band 3 of the new virtual raster. That's very important that you pay attention to this every time. We'll hit OK. Uh, I'm going to leave a lot of this stuff blank. And then I am going to save this as an output file to my hard drive. OK, so here notice that I my file has a .vrt extension that stands for virtual raster layer, so it's not a .tiff. Also notice I used a file name that again is very descriptive. Uh, the first band that are, that's on top is 2 over 7, the second one is 6 over 2, and the one on the bottom is 5 over 2. So I listed those ratios in the order they appear in my virtual layer. So we'll hit run. Doesn't take long. And here it is. Here is our uh, virtual raster layer. So now we've, we're di it's displayed in RGB color because we gave it three of those input bands. And so let's now, for a final act, let's make sure that our RGB color checks out. For example, our lake is bright red, which is really cool. So that suggests to me that band 5 over 2 has probably excuse me, band 2 over 7 has probably been assigned to red. And let's go check that out. So we're going to go into Properties and Symbology. And it should automatically default to a multi-band color. But if it hasn't, you need to go there. And so band 1, which indeed was 2 over 7, is currently assigned to red. Okay, So, that, so the thing that made water the ratio 2 over 7 that was high for water has been assigned to red, and indeed the lake is now red. OK, band 2, which is 6 over 2, um, which is supposed to be high for sand, has been assigned to green. And indeed, some of these farm fields are showing up green, suggesting that maybe we're picking up the spectral signature of some dirt or sand on those farm fields. And then finally, uh, band 3, which we had as 5 over 2, is assigned to blue, and in, 
that was supposed to be high for vegetation, and indeed the vegetation is now showing up blue. So this is called a false color image, and it all checks out. We've, we've closed the loop, I hope. Everyone understands what we've done. As a final thing, it might make more sense if the lake is blue, perhaps, and vegetation is red. That's a, a more common uh, rendering. So what I'm going to do is actually go ahead and assign band 3 to be red. Okay, so that's that. And then I'm going to assign band 1 to be blue. If I switch those, indeed, now the lake is blue, which is cool because it's water's blue. And the vegetation is a, uh, it didn't end up being quite red, but it's an orange color. So we, we always have the power to adjust the RGB assignments and create a false color combination that we're happy with. Thanks for listening, everybody. I hope this makes sense, and see you in class.